Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is my Anycubic Cobra Neo, and right now you can watch it printing a file that was sliced with the Cuda slicer, and simultaneously Octoprint is taking pictures on every layer change so that we can make an amazing time lapse. In this video, I will show you how to install Cuda, import profiles, slice your first file, and witness the power of 3D printing. But that's not all. We will be adding a creative twist with Octoprint and an old cell phone capturing an incredible time-lapse of the entire printing process and comparing it with an unconventional time-lapse. Let's begin. Right now I will explain you how my setup is working. This is my computer that is connected through USB cable to the printer. This is just an old cell phone that is working as a webcam. So you may be asking, why do you have this setup? The answer is pretty simple. If we go to the computer's screen, you can see that in here I have Octoprint. Let's give it a few seconds to start up. Now that it is connected, we can go to the second screen and open the web server that Octoprint has. We log in, we get inside. And through Octoprint, we are going to be able to manage several of the properties of the printer. For example, here we can see that it's connected. If we go to the terminal, we can send a sheet code like G28, we can see that the printer now is homing all the axes. Let's take advantage of this opportunity to increase the temperature of the nozzle so that we can save some time. And here I'm setting it to 170 and let's do the same for the bed. And there we can see that the temperatures have been changed and they are going up. So the next step is to install Cura. If we check the manual of our printer, they recommend us to use Ultimate Curve Cura version 4.12.0. This is an older version, it's not the latest one. This is just because this version is compatible with older computers that may struggle with OpenGL. That can be solved in case you need some help, you can let me know. But today we are going to be installing the latest version. So how do we do that? Let's open the browser. Let's download the latest version of CUDA. Here we are. Download for free. We are using Windows. Let's download it. It is being downloaded. Let's wait a few seconds. There it has been downloaded. Let's open it. Here we have the welcome screen. Next. I agree. We choose the directory where we want to install it. Next. Next. Nice. So it has been completely installed. Let's open it up. There we have it. So in order to get started, we're going to configure our printer. Next, we can skip this. And now we need to add our printer. We don't have an Ultimaker printer, so we choose non-Ultimaker printer. We are going to add a non-network printer because this printer works with cable or with the SD card. Non and in here, we need to go down until we see custom, custom FFF printer. And in here, we can change the name. I will put any cubic Cobra Neo next. And in here, we need to define the printing volume and some other properties. So let's change it here. Our printer is 222 of width, 222 of depth, 250 of height. We have a heated bed, so we need to click this one. Extruder, we need to change in here the diameter of the material. I'm using 1.75 millimeters. And in here we have some start sheet code and end sheet codes. These are codes that the printer is going to execute before printing and after printing. I have my own starting and ending sheet codes that are this file. I'm going to put them in there. I will share them in the description of this video in case you want to have them. Let's put them in there. Let's erase these ones. Paste. Let's come in here and the end sheet code. Let's copy and paste it in here. Now that we have done that, of course, sheet code flavor, we're having a Marlin motherboard in this printer so 
we leave it as it is. Skip, finish. So now we have our Jura installed, but we can still not print. Why? Because we need to define all the properties of our printer. The speed, the height, acceleration, all those important values that should be in here. Right now, we have the default settings. To do that, let's go to the other screen. We need to go to the Anycubic website. In here, we go to support. In support, we choose firmware and software. Once in here, we need to go to the section where we have the FDM printers. We choose the Cobra series. The latest one is Cobra 2. We close this one and we go down until we find QB Cobra Neo. And in here, we have all the documentation, the latest firmware, the driver for the USB, install it before doing anything. Of course, I have already installed it. Some G code files to do some tests. And in here, the profiles that we are going to import into Cura. So how do we do that? I'm going to be printing with PLA today. So let's download it. We'll choose it. We we'll select the destination folder and we download it. Now that it has been downloaded, let's go to the other screen. Let's go back to Cura. In here, the first thing we need to do is go to settings, configure setting visibility. The screen will be opened. You need to click on check all. And then we need to go to profiles. We can see that we have all the default profiles and we go to import. And then we go to the folder where we downloaded the profile. Yeah, that I have it in here. We select it, we open it, and we can see that it says successfully imported this profile. In here we have our, our printer. Let's check that everything has been set up properly. So we can close this. We now close this. And now, if we go to this section, we are going to see that we have all the different profiles, but we need to choose our profile. We go to custom, and then in here, we can see that a new menu is open, and we need to check that we are using Cobra Neo. Right now, it's using Fine, but we need to go to Cobra Neo. We click it. We can see it in here, and also we will see that it has a black tick on its left hand side. Good, so now our profile is loaded and all the information that is necessary for CUDA for slicing properly for our printer are already loaded. I'm going to print this cable organizer that I really like. You can see that it has three wonderful models. This version is better than the first one. I have already downloaded these files. Well, here, let's import the STL files. Open, let's choose it. And the first thing that we are going to print is the casing. Here we have it. We open the STL file. You can see that everything is fine. It is in the middle of the web. I don't see anything weird. We don't need any supports. Maybe we could use a little bit of supports in here, but I won't use it. But I'm going to change some things for this print. The quality I will leave it as, as it is. Layers of 0 0.2 layers, but I'm going to change the, let's check that it doesn't have any supports, by default, any supports. Addition plate, I don't want to have any addition plate, so in here, I won't use a wing. A rim, I would put skirt. 250 millimeters for me is too much. You change it to 25, and that would be all. Yeah, and here is what I told you, in this profile, we have all the retraction speeds. We can see that also if we go to speed, in here you have printing speed, infill speed, top and bottom speed, travel speed. All these values, you can change them for your needs. Of course, this profile can be improved and according to the different situations that you may be facing, you may change, you may use supports or not. You may make it print faster or slower. Right now, it's printing and at 50 millimeters per second. In theory, this printer could go up to 100, if I'm not mistaken. Now that we have selected the characteristics that we want the slicer to use, we can click slice. Depending on your computer, it, will, it may take longer or less time. And here we can see that the print will take one hour and seven minutes, and it's going to use approximately 
eight graphs. If we click preview, we can see that we can go inside the file, let's zoom in, and we can see how the different layers are going to be printed. It is always good to do this to see what happens, how it goes, if we see something weird in every layer. We can also go in here and see how the nozzle is going to be doing each path in each layer. So I think that everything is okay. I will save this file to the disk. I will put it in the desktop. Here we have the name and dot sheet code. So it has the information to be used in the printer. This sheet code file, you could put it in your SD card, but in my case, I'm going to be using Octoprint because I think that is a really nice app, especially for making time lapses. So let's save it. There, is, there it goes, the file has been saved. Now let's go to the other screen. We need to go to Octoprint. In here in Octoprint, we need to upload the file that we just sliced. Here we have it. We open it up. Next step is to load it. In here it says that it exceeds the print limit because of my sheet code that is making a line outside the printing area. We don't care about this thing. An Octoprint has several advantages. The first one is with different plugins, we can see what is going to happen. Here we have exactly the same file as in Cura. We can see exactly the same. We can see the different layers. And in real time, it's going to show us how the print head is moving. Also, we can see my sheet code out here. That is the error that we saw. I'm printing a priming line that in theory is outside the bed, and that is not true. Also, we have Octolabs that we're going to be using it today. The plugin is enabled. Testing mode is disabled. In here, I have several configurations. If you're interested in making another video about it. And finally, the main reason why I started using Octoprint is because of this plugin. In this plugin, I can see how the bed of my printer is. We can see if it is twisted, if it has one side that is higher than the other one, and we can see that the surface is pretty flat, but it has a little, or is a little warped in some areas. We have in here a high point, we have in here a lower point, and also in here. But if you pay attention, the difference between the higher and the lower spot is 0.1 millimeters, so less than one layer. Good. So also, we can see that the cell phone is being used to see the print in real time, how it goes. And it will also be taking photographs to make the time lapse. So I think that everything is okay. If we go to time lapse, let's go. This is the cell phone that I'm using to make the time lapse. Let's see if it is working. This webcam access. So now the only thing that we need to do is to start Printing, we can see that the printer has reached the perfect temperature. So let's print it. There you can see that the printer is beginning. There it started. There it's making the priming line. And now it will begin with the print. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Take a look at what the Octolabs plugin creates. It captures a picture each time a new layer is added and you can even make it more interesting by excluding the print head from the shots. Here we compare two different time lapses. On the left side you can witness the incredible results achieved by using Octoprint and the Octolabs plugin. On the right side a regular manual time lapse is shown. It is rather obvious that the Octoprint offers a more seamless and captivating experience of the 3D printing process. After some printing, I proudly present these fantastic cable organizers. They serve as an incredible tool to tackle messy cables and maintain a clean and organized workspace. As a result, along this video, we have accomplished the installation of the latest CUDA slicer version on our computer. It is important to note that some older computers might face challenges with the newest edition and, as advised in the user manual, may require an older version. Furthermore, 
we successfully imported the specific settings to efficiently print PLA on our Cobra Neo printer. This enabled us to accurately slice the STL files, ensuring optimal outcomes. In the final steps, we used the slice files for printing and created various time lapses. Notably, the Octolabs generated time lapse proved to be the most captivating and visually appealing. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing so you stay updated with my future projects. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Your support means a lot to me. Until next time, and be happy.